the first thing you need to know before I break down what aspects are happening is the basics of astrology. The basics of astrology are that we have male and female signs. They call it masculine and feminine. And it's basically the gender of the sign. So there's six signs that are feminine, six signs that are masculine. And what does that mean? It means that the signs that are feminine go inward, the signs that are masculine go outward. So think of a seventh grade dance. The boys are on one side, the girls on the other. They don't really understand each other. The girls are in one weird world, the boys in another. But there's something that pulls them together. And even though they don't really get along once they do start dancing, um, they need each other, right? So it's kind of how astrology works. The masculine signs love each other and the feminine signs love each other. So let's look at this. So you have fire and air, right? They're the masculine signs. They love each other. Fire signs love each other. And Aries and a Leo, they get along. Air, a Libra and an Aquarius, love each other. A Libra, air, and a Sag, fire, they party it on. They love each other, okay? But when you got a fire sign, Aries, and an earth sign, Virgo, hmm, two different worlds. The Aries, fire, is thinking, let's get out there, let's go, go, go. And the Virgo is like, I'm internal right now. I'm having anxiety. I'm really analyzing what I'm doing. Your fire is kind of scorching my earth, right? So it's the same with earth and water. They get along. Earth loves earth. Water loves water. Earth and water love each other. Now, note, disclaimer. Dun, dun, dun. Disclaimer. If you are an earth sign dating an air sign, let's say, and you're freaking out right now because you're like, oh my God, we don't get along. No, because your moon could be masculine. Their sun's masculine. Your moon's feminine. They're, you know what I mean? It could, be, it could be all kind of intermingled in your chart. So you might not even really be attracted to their earth if you're an air sign. Maybe you're attracted to their air somewhere in their chart, right? So it's all a very complicated dance, and that's why you really need to know the full birth chart. But back to the Astro Lesson 101 here, okay? So this is how we define the aspects, okay? So a trine is a fire meeting a fire, or an air meeting an air, vice versa, okay? It keeps going. So a trine just means that it's the same element, okay? It's a harmonious aspect. A sextile, sextile, is also a harmonious aspect, but it's not of the same element, it's of the same gender. So it's a fire with an air, an earth with a water. That's a sextile. I think I'm saying it right, sextile. Okay, so moving right along. The negative aspects. An opposion. <gasps> what is an opposion? An opposion is when, now it's going to get tricky here. Bear with me. An opposion is when a fire and an air come together and they're opposites. If you throw in the qualities, cardinal fixed immutable, right? There's one cardinal sign for each element. Aries, Libra, Cancer, I'm sorry, Cancer and Capricorn. And same with <coughs> all the others. So you have Leo for fixed, Aquarius, Taurus, Scorpio, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, when you have the same gender, the same quality, but different elements, you are opposite signs. It's called an opposion. Why is an opposion? It's a love-hate. You're the same in the way that you your gender is, so you're masculine. You both direct your energy outward. You're the same in your quality. What does that mean? For cardinal, you both want to control. You want to, both want to initiate, right? But you are different in the way that your element is and also your stage. Well, we're not going to throw in the stages because it just gets too complicated. So for Aries and Libra, 
Aries is more fire, cardinal masculine. And Libra is more air, cardinal masculine. Libras see both sides. They're more mental. They're more airy. They take their time before they take an action. Whereas Aries just impulsive. They go, go, go. They're fire, right? So opposition is a love-hate aspect. And then you have the square. And the square is the hardest, most resistant, most um, dissonant, if you will, aspect of the zodiac. What is a square? Well, a square is when you take a sign that is the same quality. So you take a cardinal sign. But it's a different gender, okay? So Aries squares Capricorn and Cancer. Libra also squares Capricorn and Cancer. That is what a square is. So let's begin on what this T-square is. So right now in the sky, we have some slow-moving planets, okay? So we have Pluto at the top and Capricorn. Been there since 2008, going to be there till 2023. A cardinal sign, Earth. Then we have Aries over here. The planet Uranus. <laughs> the planet Uranus is in Aries, okay? And that's a fire sign and an also a cardinal sign. This is all the cardinal signs, a cardinal T-square, okay? So it's in Aries, a fire sign. And it's been there for a couple years now, I think, and it's going to be there. Uranus stays in a sign for about seven to eight years, so it's going to be there for a while, okay? Not as long as Pluto. And then we have Jupiter. Jupiter stays in a sign for about a year. It just went into Cancer, completing most of the T, okay? So if you can see, we have Pluto up here. We have Cancer down here. We have um, Aries over here, and then with Libra. Libra right now is blank. Why? Because there's no slow-moving planets in Libra right now. But every month, the moon goes into Libra, and it completes the T-square. And um, in October, when the sun is going to go into Libra, and Venus and Mercury will also go into Libra around that time, and um, eventually Mars as well, there's going to be such a, so much energy around this T-square. Now, the last time this major T-square, we really, really felt it. We've been feeling it all year because the three of them, or well, actually Jupiter hasn't been in Cancer um, for the whole year, but we've been really feeling that Pluto, Uranus square, and then Capricorn came in to kind of join the party. And then, so if you think about last year when Hurricane Sandy happened, that was during, that was right around the Libra time. So there must have been some planets in Libra. And so it was really completing the square. So much resistance, so much, you know, just not, a, it's not a fun energy, the square energy. But it helps us grow. It takes us out of that um, harmonious space, that comfortable space, brings us to uncomfortability and helps us grow and pushes us. So there is good to dissonance, right? We don't always, we can't always have harmony. We can't always have it. So anyway, so this T-square, we're really feeling it right now. And cardinal energy wants to initiate and take control and take action. And um, I find that a lot of cardinal signs, they love to debate and fight their argument and because they want to be in control. They want to take the driver's seat. And right now, if you see in our world, a lot of these news stories and just our government and, you know, we're just we're really split right now. And the themes of Libra, and I don't want to say this and get like people up on their high horse, but Libra really is kind of kind of represents that liberal um, perspective of, you know, balance and harmony and seeing both sides and peace and all that. And Aries really um, represents more of the conservative Republican side. Why? I mean, that doesn't mean that you, you're an Aries and you're conservative. You can be an Aries and be a liberal. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that Aries is all about me, 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 my point of view my point of view, me, and doesn't really think about the other point of view necessarily. Now, both are good or and good or bad, right? But we have this really, really, like, conflicted space between our parties politically right now. Um, there's just a lot of debating and a lot of aggression going on. And I really know in my heart that it's this T-square that's really stirring the pot, right? So, and if you really look back in history to find the last time Pluto was in Capricorn. I think it was like 1700s or something. I mean, when you see the patterns of history with these slower moving planets, it's kind of eerie um, 
how similar one time long ago can be compared to this time just with because a planet was in that sign, a slower moving planet. The slower moving planets are what we want to watch for because those are the ones that are staying in that one spot for 10 to 15 years, um, long time. So this is the cardinal T-square. So this is the grand trine that we've been um, hearing about this week. It's happening as we speak right now. And basically what it is, is it's the most harmonious aspect. It's all three water signs. So they're all the same element and they're all the same gender. And they're all making an aspect with each other. As you can see, Neptune is a slower moving planet as well. It's in Pisces. Um, and then we have Saturn um, and North Node in Scorpio. And then we have Mercury, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, and Cancer. And there's this basically this trine happening where they're all interacting um, together. Now, when an aspect happens, it has to be within 10 degrees. So that means that their degrees are very close to each other within 10 degrees. So let's just say, I don't really know what the degrees are, but let's say Saturn and Scorpio is in 2 degrees, Pisces in 2 degrees, Cancer in 2 degrees, or maybe it's like 3 or 4 or 5. They're near each other. They're making an aspect, okay? And so... The cool thing about this is this is going to really like offset that harsh T-square and it's going to make us feel this just this like glorious balance of emotional energy. And granted that could be negative. We could be crying and crying and crying about something negative this week, right? Or we could also just be crying because we're just so happy about life. And maybe it doesn't come out in tears. Maybe it's just this like abundance of just gratefulness for your life, right? But it's water energy, emotion, feminine, feminine energy, inward reflection. Um, so those are kind of the themes of what this is. So this is the big one. July 29th, the grand sextile. Sextile. <laughs> okay, so basically what this means is the trine's happening, right? The water signs. And there's going to be another trine happening with the earth signs. So Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo all coming together in aspect. Moon and Taurus, Venus and Virgo. And then we have obviously um, Capricorn and Pluto, which we talked about with the, um, the T-square, cardinal T-square. So it's like a trine on top of a trine. And so all the earth signs are trining. All the water signs are trining. Trine just means same element, okay, um, same gender. So just like all coming together and it makes a sextile. Sextile is the same gender, different element. So earth and water, that's the aspect they make. And so all the feminine signs, all six feminine signs are coming together in an aspect, creating this beautiful triangle over triangle kind of um, shape, if you will, and Star of David, um, is what most people um, see when they see it. But it's just like this glorious kind of feeling. And I really think, like I said, it's going to really offset that T-square that we've been feeling. And when I say we've been feeling it, you know what I'm talking about. You see it in the news. There's so much upheaval going on. There's so much political chat. There's so much um, almost like breakdown. Almost like, because Pluto's the planet of transformation. It just kind of like, demolishes things to reform them and that's kind of I feel like what's happening with this t-square and so this is really going to offset that and bring in some more feminine energy which I think we need in this world right <laughs> a little bit less aggression more gentleness a time for inwardness reflection um, and it's really this is going to happen after mercury goes direct we're still going to be in the post retrograde of mercury but again this is awesome Thank you so much for watching my video on what's happening with the aspects currently. Um, I'm so glad you watched. I know it kind of doesn't really make a lot of sense. I really, really, really try to break it down in the most easiest way because, folks, I'm really, really passionate about astrology. I've been doing it for 15 years. It's the most amazing thing. And it's not a subject that you just read about and that's it. It's a continuous, continuous study. And I just want so badly for you to all understand what I see in the different themes and different um, patterns that are going on. I mean, the sky really does reflect what's happening.
down here. And it's not something where you don't have con control over your life because you totally do. You can create whatever you want. You can take that energy and make it good or bad or whatever. But the themes are the themes and they're real. And, you know, I look at my life on a global scale and a personal scale and even my friends' lives and I know exactly why things are happening. It makes perfect sense to me and the lessons that are behind that. And a lot of people kind of think, what? I don't get it. What's going on in my life? Like, why are these things happening? Like, what's going on in the news? Like, everything se seems so random. But there really is this orchestra behind the scenes of your life. And so I really, really encourage you to get a reading. Um, right now, my, my pricing packages are extremely affordable. You can get anything from a 10-minute reading to an in-depth 60-minute reading with a design chart. Um, and in a lot of those readings, you can add a horoscope and a relationship reading to the package. And so I really encourage you to get your chart read because I'm sitting here so passionate about this and I just want to tell you about what's going on um, behind the scenes in your life. So sign up today. Check me out on Facebook or my website, natalbirthchart.com. Thank you for watching. Bye, everyone.